You touched on HGH, a growth hormone, a little bit, and, and that's been pretty controversial. Why is that, and uh -huh. why is it potentially beneficial? Yeah, well, you've got to look back at orthodox medicine. As many of us see it, they don't really look for cures. They want to keep you sick, coming, and paying, right? I mean, that's the medical, that's the medical system, right? And uh, the numbers actually clearly support our thinking. Every year, there's a number of groups that release the standing of the ranking of different countries in the world. Guess what? Previously, it was, the U.S. was something like uh, between 40 and, 40 and 60. Well, this year, 37, 47, and 52. Now, with our capacity, we could be number one in the world. I mean, emergency medicine is fantastic, right? Would we have the equipment? I mean, analytical tools. I mean, it's, it's absolutely magnificent. But the application down the road is not really what we think should be done, right? I mean, if you have a disease, the number one effort should be to find a cure for that disease, not just cover it up with some drugs, right? And that's totally, that's definitely happening here. I mean, we see there are some underdeveloped countries that are lucky enough to have a climate that they can grow crops, raise some animals, and on the other hand, don't have enough money to buy our drugs. And guess what? They're right up there with, with the top people in the world, right? <laughs> it, it, it's really, it, it's almost a joke, you know? I mean, if, if you take this a little bit further, we totally believe that... Uh, uh, Stem cells, the real stem cells, the ones with full telomere lengths, with your DNA, like the embryonic equivalent stem cells, right? That this is never going to happen in the U.S. Why? Because if they do, and streamline that approach, it's now estimated, because we already know the different steps from A to Z, how to get there. As a matter of fact, to everybody's surprise, a couple of months ago, Oregon University made human stem cells via the nuclear transfer approach, right? And I talked to them. And it was really kind of, at first, you know, very polite. And then it seems like, well, we just wanted to do it, so we just did it, right? And, uh, and it worked. The other approach to make stem cells fully active, not nearly fully active, because I haven't done it yet, is the IPS approach, induced pluripotent stem cells, right? And what you have to do there is you have to take a <clears throat> you have to take four retroviruses, right? A retrovirus inserts itself into your own DNA and four different retroviruses with four different control genes, you're supposed to put that into your skin cells and then the skin cell behaves like a stem cell. No, it doesn't work this way. I'm a laboratory guy. I know what I can do in the laboratory, right? And this is one of the reasons why I wrote my book, The Lifelong Health, Learn How to Control Your Genes to Stay Young with Age, right? And if you want to know a little bit more about that, uh, go to our website, drhanskugler.com, right? And you see our laboratory, our equipment, our hypothesis, what we're doing from the basis up, and, and so on and so on, right? And uh, so if we streamline making specific stem cells via nuclear transfer is estimated that would cost a mere $18,000 per person. Right? And then you'd be totally regenerated and you wouldn't need any drugs and so on. Naturally, they're not going to let this happen. Right? Mm -hmm. That's why many researchers go to different countries. I mean, uh, I was in Japan, I was in Mexico City, I was in Thailand and, uh, you know, sort of sending out my feelers, you know, possibly what could be done in the future.